Yo, I'm easily fascinated. I'm feeling so creative. It's your boy Stevie. I'm a planet Earth native. I'm enjoying all the moments because it's such a thrill living. And I'm not sure if you notice. Listen up, we're still spinning. Yes! All right. What is going on? Still spinning 73. We're back. This is a podcast I've wanted to do for a few weeks now, but I'm glad I waited because I actually learned a lot more along the way, but I just got really hyped about uh, some new little techniques or things that helped my life, improve my life habits, which is something I really like to uh, share. And um, hold on, I gotta turn this down a little bit. I don't know how to do it. Okay. Anyway, so I uh, have been meaning to do this for a while. Um, I'm just going to kind of get right into it, but still spinning. The earth is spinning right now. I really want this podcast to be about raising your awareness living your life to the fullest, just simply to enjoy it more. Because as I've been doing that and my life has been more enjoyable, it's just been filled with so much enjoyment. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to get into that. Um, Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for press and play. Um, Yeah, much love. Let's just get right into it. So today's podcast, if you've listened to the one in the past, I read this book called Think and Grow Rich. And that really kind of started my journey into kind of manifesting things. I was really hype about it, tried to use it, really got into visualization. Um, But then recently, more recently, I read just like this past couple month or two, I read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, which kind of talked about the same exact thing, but brought science to it. And um, the reason I'm really hyped to share about this podcast or this podcast with you is because learning these techniques and learning all these more information connects the sort of spiritual with the reality we're in and makes it more concrete. And I feel like if you knew everything that I learned or read everything that I learned, um, it would it would resonate with you a lot more because I love analogies and when things kind of connect because I'm always questioning and I never really believed in anything like this before. But what the more I learn, the more it's kind of connected and I find concrete examples that are kind of undeniable. So I really wanted to share that with you. I have my little notepad here. If you're watching the video, what's good? By the way, if you're watching the video, these are available on audio on all podcast platforms, well, at least iTunes and Spotify, the big ones, and I think SoundCloud and uh, Google Play too, but and Spreaker. It's all on my website. But point is, is there's a lot about journaling. I've talked about that. If you're following my Instagram, you see I've been meditating more, journaling more, and there's a lot to that, and I want to get into it all. It all connects, so stick with me. Um, I'm going to go through like a whole story time, but I promise you it'll all connect. And I've told the story to a ton of my friends already, um, but I've been meaning, I've been kind of sharpening it. So hopefully it comes all coherent, but I really hope just by the end of this, that you're just intrigued a little bit just to think a little differently because it's definitely changed the way I've thought and it's made my life better and more efficient and more productive. And I feel great about everything about it. And I just... Every time I learn something this impactful, it makes me want to share it because it's made such a big shift in my life that's made me um, do a lot more with life. Okay, here we go. So Think and Grow Rich, if you haven't read it, you can go back to the other podcast where I talk more about it. Basically talks about how your subconscious is connected to the universe or the collective unconscious where all the information is. And it kind of makes that made sense to me because everything you've ever thought came from somewhere or um, was already there. You just kind of had to discover it, even like high level math and things like that. They just had to keep discovering it and it takes higher level thinking, but it was already there. So, and then on top of it, he was saying how emotions kind of connect um, your subconscious to that other field. So from our reality through emotions, you connect to that. So that made sense to me. There's more to it, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, And basically the emotions are kind of like a higher frequency. So you're kind of tuning into that and your brain is like the, like the little receiver. That was kind of spiritual. I totally get it. And it's kind of like out there a little bit. But I believe that also because it linked back to making progress with dunking, with the visualization, you need to have a strong desire. And if you truly believe it, it happened. So like for my first dunk, I knew I would get it because I had prime examples like Andy and different people that um, showed me was possible. So I believed it 100%. But then things that I couldn't get to that 100% belief were really hard, like the dribble dunk. And then I used visualization and all that stuff. Um, So that was all like the spiritual side and sort of the... uh, uh, trying to just believe in it, but um, more from just a, an emotional 
experience side. But then, um, so now I'm just going to do a little tangent of the placebo effect. I know it sounds like we're all over the place. I'm telling you, I'm, I'll bring us back. I'm going to bring it full circle. So placebo effect, I was listening to a podcast with Joe Rogan, as usual. This was a while ago. But this guy brought up the placebo effect. I think he was, I forget who he was. I really should know this. I might have brought this up in a pod, another podcast, so I'm sorry if I did. But simply, everybody believes in the placebo effect. I think the majority of people do. Um, if you don't, it's pretty, um, is this, why is it so loud? Okay, there we go. Sorry. So the placebo effect, what happens? You take a pill thinking it's something and it still heals your ailment, whatever it is. So we've all had the experience probably, or maybe we've heard of the experience and believe in it. Um, and so what's happening? Your mind is thinking you're taking something and it heals it. But this guy was explaining, why don't we try to use that to our advantage and, I believe I when he said that I never thought of it that way and is basically saying okay so if we know that it's real meaning like we know that if we give someone a placebo versus an actual medicine the placebo may work just the same just because they thought it was the medicine so what's happening there their mind is literally changing their physiology so we know that the mind can do that or a thought or the belief of doing it or belief that's working will actually change your physical body and there's a million studies on that. So why not, knowing that, that you can take a pill, why not try to do that to your advantage? And then the thing is, for me, that makes perfect sense is that it's hard to believe. If I tell you right now that you have knee pain and you could just think of it going away, that's really hard to get, it to get yourself to believe that. But I'm choosing to believe that if you can get to that 100, you can believe it because we have studies that show that if you took a pill and for some reason, if, if like in the future, if someone said this pill cures knee pain, you would take it, it and it would work. You'd believe in it. But if it was a placebo, it might work as well because you, if you just believe so hard in some fake evidence or whatever it was. The point is, is that we could try to use that to our advantage knowing that it's happened. I think I've hammered it home a million times in the same circle, but you get the point. So placebo effect, it'll come back in the story as a theme, but basically that your mind can control... Um, your physiology, and we can use that to your advantage, and we probably should be trying to do that, and it ties into the visualization. Okay, so going on to, um, uh, what did I write there? Energy opens perspective. I'm right reading my notes. Okay, so going on to breaking the habit of being yourself. This is where it starts to uh, get more science and more concrete. So Joe Dispenza wrote the book. It's a really great book. I suggest you read it. Read it. It's kind of um, he breaks it down to the atom level, and that's what I'm going to get into. The first chapter talks about how uh, the atom, I'm not going to say this perfectly right, but you get, you'll get the point, and it's also another theme that will go throughout the story. <laughs> I hope that, I don't know how this is sounding, but I hope you're enjoying. Um, so the atom, uh, in the past, we've used to think, I think like the electron that's like surrounding the atom or something like that was just kind of orbiting it, but now in the more recent theory of that electron is that it is in a wave and then the second we look for it or try to observe that electron it collapses into a particle and that is basically quantum physics it's a quantum theory of um, how atoms are behaving something like that i don't know how to put it into words but there's smarter people that explain how the the collapse of the wave function in the quantum physics but i'll get into that a little later as well but basically he was saying that all atoms are 99.999, I think it was, percent energy, and the other 0.001% is physical matter. So that means all atoms are mainly energy, mostly energy, meaning like a wave, not like a physical thing that you could touch. It's just like a wave, like a piece of energy, if that makes sense. So that's a pretty interesting fact because that means, because everything is made up of atoms, so everything physical is mainly energy. So that was like a new thought for me. I never really knew that. And I now knowing that, it's really weird to look at the world and think that every single thing you look at is mostly energy, no matter how physical it is now. It's just that's how we see it in this reality is the physical part, but it's mostly energy. Um, and so that was like the first thing that kind of changed my mind. And then um, the other thing he was talking about was um, the how in the actual atom that the electron is only in a physical space when you observe it. It's called the observer effect and it has, it's in a, so, it, so basically the, in the little cloud around the atom, I think I'm saying this right, but the, the, the concept is right. I know that, but I don't know if I'm using the little terms 
uh, properly, but in the subatomic level or whatever it is in the atoms, there's like a cloud and it's like a quantum place and the electron could be anywhere at any time. We don't know where it is, but it, it could be at all places at all times meaning everywhere at once. I know that doesn't really make sense, but it's kind of in a quantum state where it's a wave and it's everywhere. But the second we go to measure it, that's when it has physical time and space. And um, Joe Dispenza in his books is is explaining that's um, very pertinent to the way we use visualization and the way we can approach our lives because if the atom is acting that way when we observe it, Um, and everything is energy, just like those atoms, everything is made up of atoms, then the way we look at the world um, can be affected by the what we're observing. And I kind of understand that now from later things, but um, in the book, I was kind of like, I don't really get this. I'll tell you the part that I didn't really get. So now he's saying everything's energy. And um, when you look at the atoms, they manifest or they turn into a physical piece only when you observe it. And that's real. That's like real science. That's what the quantum physics is. So I'm like, okay, but then this is the part where it kind of lost me. So then he was saying, when you're producing thoughts, which are also energy, it's atoms, like you, like synapses in your brain or whatever, um, and you visualize them, that is making those experiences real. And every possibility in your life, every possibility in your life is basically in that quantum state, any experience you could think of. And then when you visualize one experience you want to have, that pulls you closer to having that experience. Now that to me was, thing, I was thinking, well, how, does, how is there a pull there? I didn't really understand how, I understood that if you visualize it, it kind of made it real, but I could think of a million different things. How do I pull myself to the which experience I want? I guess which one I, um, which one I focus on, I'll kind of get pulled to, but why am I getting pulled to it? Why, why is it not just like making it real over there? if that makes sense. So that was kind of, I really struggled with, struggled with that. And that's what I'm excited with this podcast is because by the end of it, I kind of understand it and I hope you will too, or understand more about it. That makes me um, realize why it's working. Okay. So now I'm at the point where I went, let's recap a little bit, think and grow rich, manifesting with the subconscious of the universe and kind of spiritual uh, placebo effect where um, your mind can control your body. Um, just basically because we have studies that you get it and the <laughs> breaking the habit of being yourself telling me that all energy, all, all atoms are energy and everything is energy of atoms, atoms and energy, energy, atoms, atoms. <laughs> you get it. So everything's made out of energy and now, um, the collapse of the wave function and that's how atoms are created or not created, but that's how atoms behave. So if everything's made out of those atoms and that's how they behave, everything can be kind of altered like that. And that's what you do. Okay. So then, um, let's see where I'm at. Okay, so now I'm confused. How do I pull that experience to me? I kind of get it. I kind of understand that even my thoughts are real. And Oh, and the other thing about the subconscious, this is a big key, is that I also learned with the placebo effect or through these books, um, through through breaking the habit of being yourself and my life coaching sessions, which is all about um, neuro-linguistic programming. That's the training center I'm in. It's called NLP if you're interested. And so I'm learning a lot about the brain. And one thing I've learned with the subconscious that ties into all these things with, the, with your subconscious is that your subconscious doesn't know the difference, um, at least emotionally, with an experience you're having in real life or you had or one that you visualize. You can still have those experiences or responses. For example, if you think of getting hyped for a dunk or landing a dunk right now, if I visualize it too much, my palms will get sweaty. That's real. That's tangible. That's something you can prove that my palms are sweaty. You could, you could even prove like my heart, my heart rate might increase, but I didn't do anything. I sat here and thought about it. So that to me is another theme of this whole story. That's very important because, um, you're, just like the placebo effect, your thoughts are changing your actual body. So that's real. You can't really dispute that. Um, I can understand that you might, it might not be as impactful if you just visualize it, but the, the, the point is, is that it's, it's happening and, um, there's more to that as well, that this theory will come back. Okay. So we also know that visualization and your subconscious doesn't know the difference between visualizing something and it happening. So that's a big uh, theme as well. Okay, so then randomly, I was just like, after I read the book, I was like, what the F is quantum? I don't get this. I want to try to understand it. I want to learn more about it because I've, I've, heard, I've heard so much. It's so fascinating. I read this book. Okay, so I started looking up quantum on YouTube. There's a great video. If you just type in quantum physics uh, understanding, it's, there's like a basic 12-minute video. It says, 
understanding quantum physics. That's a great one. And then there's another one that's called uh, Why the Earth Might Not Exist. I think it's by Riddle. It's more of those like kind of like conspiracy ones, but it still was really good because it was talking about quantum physics. It told you like the main experience, which is the uh, experiment, which is a two slit experiment. Um, and then it also talked about video games, which is what I want to get into. Okay, so quantum physics. In this two-slit experiment, what's happening is they're kind of firing things through these two slits, and, the, and they observe how they land on the wall. So physical matter, matter and physical particles go through these two slits, just like you'd think, and land in those two lines on the wall. But if you were to, for example, push like a ripple through that, like a water ripple, when the ripple goes through the two slits... Um, the ripple comes out of the two slits and expands and will hit the wall in like a pattern that like drifts out because the ripples keep expanding. Just think of like dropping a pebble. It's really hard to explain this experiment through words. The video does a really good job because it's, it's very visual. I'm very visual. That's what I'm learning. So I'm going to try to explain it in words, but basically just think of like a rock. When you first drop the rock in a, in a pond, the ripples go outwards, right? And if there was like a, if there was like a, almost like an opening or a wall in the water and the ripples like going towards that wall. If you're looking on the video, it makes sense on my video podcast. It goes through this wall, the ripple, it's like a big ripple, it's expanding. And then when it hits the wall, this is not making any sense. It, when it hits the wall and it goes through the slit in the wall, a new ripple is formed and it expands outwards. That's the point of it. Anyway, this is another thing that the concept is correct. I don't know if I'm going to use the words right, but they were trying to, I think, shoot electrons through it. And the way they were landing on the wall was behaving like a wave. But when they tried to ex uh, observe what was happening in this experiment, um, it would turn the electron into a physical particle. So that was mind boggling. And that was kind of, that's, I think that's the kind of the core of quantum physics, quantum mechanics, um, which is they don't know what's causing that collapse of the wave function or why. All they know is that they're observing of it. Um, the 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 fact that they are what am i trying to say the act that's what i'm trying to say the act of measuring or the act of trying to observe what happens is causing it to to change from a wave into a physical particle and that's super fascinating cuz that's really happening and that's science and that's actual quantum physics and that's that's like the number one question of quantum physics i'm pretty sure and so it's called the collapse of the wave function. You could find it everywhere. And there's, the videos are really helpful because it explains what's happening visually. And that helps me learn it a lot. So I definitely suggest checking that out. So that's happening. That's quantum physics. Now, here's the really cool part. Um, they were talking about video games. And when you think of a video game, if you're into this, this is really helpful if you're into video games or at least understand kind of computers. But you don't really need to. I'll try to explain it. So if you're thinking of GTA, Grand Theft Auto, that's the one that comes to mind. It's a giant map, huge map. It's probably like, I think it's like, think of like all of New York, whatever it is. And whatever, wherever your character is, that's the part of the map that's generated. Sometimes like in other games, like maybe the whole other part of the map that you're not looking at or not in is not even generated at all. Or it's like generated, but very simply. And then when you go to that part of the map, it kind of gets more detailed. So if you're kind of with me on that, hopefully you are. Basically, what's happening is that wherever the character is, say he's in like a small, like one mile radius, that's all generated, but the rest of the 20 miles of the map are not generated. Why do they do this? It just makes the game more, um, more efficient. It's optimized. It just makes total sense because if you're running this huge quality game with such great graphics, it's, it's going to take up way more memory or way more power to produce a, a friggin' 50 mile map at all times rather than just one mile map and then wherever the character is, it changes. So that's really interesting because it's the same thing as the observer effect that we were talking about or I was talking about, um, we were sharing in. Because as the character walks, he kind of has like a line of sight, right? So whatever he, like they were showing in the videos, like some games might be even more efficient. Like not only is like the little, like for a Grand Theft Auto, say he's like his little mile radius, that's what he's observing, but he can't actually see um, that mile radius, but it just might be, that's plenty of efficiency that he can have a whole mile generated. But what if it's just his line of sight? What if it's just like literally what the character can see on the screen, like what you're seeing on the screen? What if that's generated? And the second he turns his head, that's what's generated. So literally what's out of his sight is not 
generated. And then the second he looks, it becomes generated or more detailed or whatever. And that is the same principle of the observer effect of the atom is like, it's not generated. It's not there. The city's not detailed, whatever it is, the map of the video game. Um, it's literally not generated. And then the second he observes it, the character lands in that spot, it becomes generated. And you don't even know this is difference. You, you think the whole map's generated. Given that there are glitches and times you maybe go too fast and you'll see like buildings, you might have, if you've played video games, you'll see like buildings that kind of get generated as you're seeing it. That's just because it's whatever. It's like a glitch or it's just, uh, uh, what's it called? It's just how it happens. It doesn't really need to be generated. It doesn't really affect the game. Um, AKA deja vu in our real reality. Imagine that's what deja vu is. You kind of see it happen. You're like, whoa, that's a glitch. Yeah. Okay. Simulation. So, um, What's really fascinating to me about that is that makes sense. Again, going back to the analogies that I love and concrete things is that's happening in video games. That's a real thing that they're doing. I've played video games and it just makes sense from a logical standpoint to optimize the game that way. So that's concrete. And since that's real and it's real in quantum physics, it's really weird to think that that's how our games are now. And if they keep getting better and we keep making the maps built bigger, imagine if we make the maps the size of the world, then... If we make the characters more realistic and give them more physical features and then we start generating their atoms of a human to like simulate a whole world, um, we would make their atoms do the same observer effect. So it's just – it's the same congruency between what we're already doing in video games and how our own atom uh, – is manifesting or whatever, how our own atom is behaving. So it's so strange to me. To me, it's like almost like conclusive evidence that it's some kind of simulation. Not that it's a video game simulation, but our universe is kind of connected in that way that it's kind of been happening and happening because um, if we're doing it already and we extrapolate our technology advances into the future and we keep getting better and better and more efficient, then um, we're not even going to know the difference of what we're observing um, that's just getting manifested and we can go all the way down to the atom. You get the point. So that's super fascinating. I never really thought about it, but, um, let's see. So it's the observer effect happening in video games. It's happening in quantum physics. And now that helped me understand why I, why visualizing from the book of breaking the habit of yourself, why visualizing produces that energy and, um, and brings you towards that event. Because now thinking of the video game analogy is that when I visualize this experience, it makes it a real experience. And the thing about the emotions is that, the other thing about the emotions is this, is that if you if you feel that emotion, I forgot to say this when I first brought up uh, the subconscious doesn't know the difference, is like when you have those emotions, say you visualize yourself getting hyped for a dunk and getting like the palms sweaty, you're changing your energy. That's another thing the Breaking the Habit of book book is explaining. And it's not that it like it didn't feel like it just convinced me of that. It just kind of feel like it opened my eyes to that. So basically it's like now I'm hype and that's changing my physiology. Now I'm producing different energy because now I'm thinking everything's energy, everything I feel, all my emotions is energy. So if I'm visualizing something in the future, I'm changing my physiology now with sweaty palms. I'm also now producing different energy, which is gonna make me walk through life differently. So that's really fascinating to me as well. Um, So now when I'm thinking about visualizing experience and making it real and kind of manifesting it to happen, uh, that it's more, if you think of it in terms of energy, that experience is in a quantum state, it's somewhere out there. When I visualize it and make it real by visualizing it with emotion and feeling it, it's kind of um, observing that experience in some space and it's making it real because now it's bringing it to me in this current energy, and now I'm going towards it because now the energy I'm producing is sort of, uh, what's it called? So now I'm producing different energy, and now I'm going to go towards that because that's the energy I'm producing. It's the same energy of that experience, and now I'm making it in my current state, so now that's why they're getting pulled together. Does that make sense? That's still the hardest part for me to understand, Um, but because of understanding the observer effect and it's making it more real. It's not just like I'm making a, uh, maybe you could understand it from what I, how I told the story is that at first I thought I was just kind of like having this vision and then I'm going towards it. But now it's like that vision or that experience has its own energy. And then I'm bringing that to my current state. So now I'm going, I'm, it's almost like there's all these different paths, right? But then 
um, I connect to that energy. So now I'm kind of connected to it. So now as I go, it's kind of that's the current, that's the wavelength I'm, I'm riding on to go to that uh, reality over there that has the energy that I want. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, I think that kind of got that out good enough. Um, but now it's like, now the visualization is really powerful for me because I think of um, if that, that's really happening in our atom and if I really, if that's happening in our atom and it's basically saying that uh, the act of observing it makes it real, then the act of me observing an experience I want to have in my future makes that experience real and then also changes my energy to go towards it. That's kind of it. It still doesn't, it's still really hard to explain because it's more of a feeling, I believe. So I, but, but learning all those other things and learning the quantum physics and learning how the video games are actually doing that and that it goes back to how our atom works and all those different things kind of made me connect the dots between why it's working before and before it was kind of more, I think this works, but I don't really get how. Um, yeah. Uh, if I figure out a better way to say it, I'll, uh, I'll say it in another time, but I want to move on to the next thing, which is, um, what I'm currently doing, um, Oh, and the last thing about the emotions is that the reason why the emotions help is because when you get when you use emotion in your visualization, the weird thing is that in the Think and Grow Rich book, the emotions they just said were like a higher frequency and you tune into like the universe, kind of like spiritually woo-woo. But this one is saying the emotions are the highest form of energy, kind of the same thing. But if you think about it, when you have those emotions, you feel it now. So when you just think about an experience without emotion, you just kind of see it. But when you have emotion with it, you can feel that you can feel those emotions now. And that's something that's more concrete for me. So the emotions are the key. If you're trying to do your little visualization, do it. So now I want to move on to me trying to practice it. So after I read this book, after I read the quantum physics, I wanted to put this into practice. I was doing visualization previously, but I was having trouble sleeping because I was trying to do, I learned that your brain waves go to more a subconscious state when you're going to sleep and when you're waking up, like when you're in sleep mode, that's more subconscious. So a great time to do visualization is in the morning or at night before you sleep. So I was trying to sleep on it because if you fall asleep with those feelings, your, your brain kind of like replays it over and over again. So the next morning you wake up, I've heard visualization at night is good, but here's the problem. I was trying to visualize at night. Let me double check my camera really quick. So I was trying to visualize at night and it was getting me too amped. It was getting me too excited because, was, for example, we use the dunk analogy. I was trying to um, visualize myself landing a dunk and I was getting hype and then I couldn't sleep because I, I just wanted to keep doing it. I wanted to, I wanted to keep visualizing. I wanted, to, I wanted it too badly and it just made it too real. It wasn't, I wasn't able to let go and kind of detach from it. Um, so I... So I actually brought it up in my life coaching classes because my my coaches or teachers are really they really into this and they really have really good insight and all these type of techniques and visualization and how your brain works and I said it was causing some anxiety because I just wanted to get it done and it was it was kind of causing the wrong it was I was getting the right emotions because I was feeling so excited but I wanted to do it now now I felt like I was I wanted to go do it um, so I brought it up and he brought up journaling, which is really interesting to me because I've been trying to journal. I was writing my day down, uh, most nights and just things like that. And then journaling, I asked about, can I write it on the computer versus a notebook? And this is kind of what I wanted to say in my podcast originally, but then I learned all about these other things. So this podcast I wanted to do a few weeks ago was all about this journaling part. So this is kind of the whole second half, which ties into this visualization. So he mentioned that, um, journaling in on paper is way better because it's connected to your hand and you're physically writing and your hand is very connected to your subconscious. And what does that mean? That means that when you write these experiences down, instead of just thinking about them, it makes them even more real because your, your hand is connected to your subconscious, um, in a very strong way. And what he was explaining was like, there's a lot of experiments to show this and, or studies. And one of them is like holding a pendulum, which is just like a little thing that go, moves back and forth. And if you close your eyes and just kind of move it back and forth and repeat the word, yes, it'll move, say left to right. It doesn't matter the direction up and down. It'll just move in one direction. And then if you say the word no, with your eyes closed and keep moving the pendulum, 
it'll move in a different direction. So basically you don't, you're not even, you're subconsciously moving your hand in different directions just based on what you're thinking. So your hand is very connected. And when you write on paper, um, those experiences get into your subconscious way more powerfully. When you're typing on the computer, you're not connected as much. Um, so that is that was something that was very powerful. I did not know that. And now the other thing that was really powerful about it was handwriting. So if you write every day and you're doing your journal every day, you can go look back and see like an analysis. So that's something fun you can do. Like you can see how you write when you're more stressed, when you're more relaxed, et cetera. But what's great about that is that when you can see when you're more relaxed, you can use that to your advantage. So for, for example, if you're doing this visualization at night, you can write in a more relaxed state. So by the time of your visualization, it'll actually induce that state of calmness. So if you like write super slow, it'll kind of help you feel relaxed. And I'm all about um, getting good sleep. Like that's really important for me. So I would love to get myself into a calmer state because I've always had the trouble of wanting to do the most. So I try to do like a to-do list before I go to sleep, but then that's using my problem solving brain. So they say it's good to really shut off, but it's tough for me to shut off. So this has really helped me a lot. That's another reason I want to share this visualization. And the other thing is that simply writing it, since it's connected to your head, it gets all those thoughts out, like it gets them out on paper. And I was trying to do that with the computer, but because it's but because it's more connected to your hand, it feels like you're getting it out of your hand, out of your head. I mean, so and that's great. And then, oh yeah, back to the hand connected to your subconscious, you feel it more. So when you're when it's connected to your hand more, you can feel those emotions more. Like when you write things down, it becomes more real because since it's connected, if your brain thinks you're having that real experience much more strongly, and you feel those emotions better. Okay, so what I've been doing is at night is the last thing I do is I just kind of fantasize and it's called future pacing. You can do just the very next day. Like for last night, for today, I would say my podcast went great. I got everything out I wanted to say. I don't know if it's it's going great. I think it is. But I was like visualize myself kind of hitting end on my recording and just feeling that sense of how great it went. And that gratitude is one of the most, is the strongest emotion because you, you, um, you can, uh, it really produces a sense of accomplishment. And then what, what's great about feeling that gratitude of like, wow, that was so great. I'm so happy I got it done. Then you go to sleep with that emotion and you wake up like it's already done. You're producing that energy again. And so you're in a different state when you're approaching your thing instead of a state of like, I hope this goes well. You're in a totally different state and that energy is really important to how it goes. So it's just, it all ties back and it makes more sense. And what's great about the Breaking the Habit book and all these different things I'm learning is that it's not just um, thinking that this helps. There's a lot of brain chemistry and science that you can measure that proves this stuff. So that's what I like. I like the stuff that I can prove because it helps me believe in it more. Whether it's believing it or it's just placebo effect, it's still happening. I brought that placebo effect back in there smooth. Okay. But my point is, is that if I go to sleep thinking, I f- well, feeling gratitude and I wake up and I have a great podcast, I could be like, wow, that visualization worked. Now, did it work because it was just placebo and I'm like, it's going to work and I think it's going to work? Or did it work because it changed my mind? It doesn't matter. But the other thing is that it, there probably is some things that we can measure scientifically. Um, what else? I think there was more. Okay, so now the other thing about that was that b- back to that placebo effect of making things happen, um, making like better habits for yourself, like helping me get to sleep better. The other thing I've been doing lately is um, doing different triggers like to help me get more productive or make me calm. And I th- that's another thing about the placebo effect that I, I don't really care, but it helps produce that energy and it's, it's all tied into one. So I'm trying to tie it all into, all into, all to, what the f- tie it all together right now. So for example, when I wake up this morning, I did a meditation and I lit a meditation, uh, incense that's called meditate. It doesn't like smell like meditation, but it's just, it's the point is, is that there's different incenses for different things I do. So for example, when I wanted to start this podcast, I, I lit another one that said energize. So that way, even if it's just in my head, like I smell that trigger and it, and then I do something productive. Then every time I smell that trigger, smell that incense, I'll tr- I'll get into a productive state. And that's also something that you can measure as well. Is that you you've probably had this experience already. When you smell something, it brings you back to an experience you had. So if you can, oh, I think my camera died. One sec. Sorry, my camera actually has like a thirty minute 
time limit, but also it overheats sometimes. So I had to take a break. Anywho, um, it's going to be really interesting if I ever get my own producer, a little studio. That's going to be wild. Okay, I'm, I'm observing it, and I'm making it real, and it's going to happen. Cool. That's also all I have to do. Great. Okay, so you've all had that experience where you probably smelled something, and it brought you back, brought you right back to that experience. And what's great about that is it's kind of proof that you can, another concrete proof, bring it back to the analogies, is why not use that, just like the placebo effect, why not use that to our advantage if we know that we had a smell, oh, that smell reminds me of Jamaica in 2007, you know, or that freaking tree Christmas, you know, everything, everybody has that, or uh, oh, that candle Hanukkah um, for mom, and so, uh, <laughs> what's it called, so then, yeah, so why not use that to our advantage, why not be like, set up triggers for yourself so the second you smell it you get productive or the second you smell it you feel calm or whatever it is just like inducing the states of your writing everything's connected everything is energy that's pretty much all i had to say is those two lines and the whole podcast was done but i'm trying to convince you and i'm trying to raise your brain up i feel like i'm pulling you by the freaking scalp and just yanking you up okay so other triggers i've done recently so that's journaling that's future pacing another thing you can do is so you could do the next day you could do in one month, six months, one year, five years. It's a great practice because not only is it filling you with those emotions so you feel gratitude and then you're in the right energy, but you're making those experiences real. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference. And um, it's in the breaking the habit science world, it's you're making that experience real because you're observing it and then you're changing your energy currently. So now you're kind of getting pulled towards that because that experience has energy. You're changing your current energy and now you're making them align because your energy is kind of now on that current. It's going to get pulled to that reality because that's what it is. Okay. In the spiritual world, it's like you're, you're observing it with emotion and um, now you're thinking on that frequency and you're just manifesting it. You're pulling yourself towards it. I like both. Um, Obviously, the science one might be a little bit easier to believe or a little bit more linked, connected. Um, and the other trigger I do that I really, I recently like just did was that um, I'm just in my own apartment and I have my TV in my bedroom. And I did that because I love to just lay down and watch. So, but I was also laying down and uh, watching, not before bed, but I was also like eating my meals there too, just in my room. So my bed was kind of where I was eating. So the other thing I wanted to do, I did was move my TV into my living room. I eat on the couch. <laughs> I don't have tables yet. I'm, I'm whatever. Um, it's not the point. Okay. Um, what's great about that is that now all I do in my room, I don't even, I even leave my phone on my dresser, not even my nightstand is that. So the second I lay down, I, ne I don't get up <laughs> and it's like, all I do in my bed is sleep. So that way the second I lay down, my body knows sleep and that's pretty easy to, un to understand, but um, something you may overlook. But if you keep doing these triggers, you're going to friggin' sleep in comatose every time. But I just, I love those things. So like the second you go into a room, you feel productive. Those are real things. You know your body's conditioned. So you ever, um, this is pretty interesting. If you ever like go into the bathroom, if you ever like go to take a shower, a lot of times if you get undressed, you feel like you have to pee. It's almost like because you got undressed, you feel like you have to pee. Do that next time and see, see if you notice that because that's another like, auto response your body has, but you, you, you've probably not haven't noticed it. And this comes back to awareness, which I think is one of the most important things ever, because the more aware you are to me, well, it's, I say to me, cause I don't want to like generalize, but I truly feel it's everyone. The more aware you are, the more efficient and productive and more happiness you can bring to your life. Cause you can use all these things to your advantage and you live a better life. So if you're just unaware, AKA letting your subconscious control everything, you're going to be going through life, going through these patterns that you don't even know, and you're carving these things. But you're, if you're aware, you're like, oh, why am I doing this? You could adjust that pattern to, to um, guide you or not even guide you. You can you, adjust that pattern to the path you want instead of just getting programmed to do it. And that's the last thing I think I want to touch on. Maybe not. We'll see. But the subconscious, what it does is that it likes to go to the known. This is a fact. It wants to go to what's known. That's why it's so hard to do new things. Or for example, if you know you have to, like procrastination is a good example. Right now, you know you have to do something. That's it. But the unknown of getting started is so scary for you that even though the potential is like, if you're rational, it's like, it's, I just have to get started. That's all it is. It's like, because it's unknown, it's like so hard for your brain to allow you to do it. You'd rather just sit in the known of not doing it, I guess. That's not the best example. But the point is, is like the second you do it, you've all felt that as soon as you started, like, oh, that wasn't so bad at all. 
Or if like you need to call somebody and you're like, I don't want to do it. I know I, I know I should. It's like the known is what you're doing right now. And the unknown is so much scarier even though. But that's just because that comes from survival. It's like when, if, you ha- if you know what's happening, you survive. But if you, ha- if you went into the unknown or you went somewhere, like you travel somewhere, you literally died from lions, things like that. So that's just our brain being programmed. So if you know that, you can use it to your advantage. You could, you could do better, use your brain better. So speaking of the visualization, I really like to do it at night. It's been really helpful. It's been really helpful for me to do it as the last thing I go to bed. I get it out of my head. I feel those emotions. And when you feel those emotions, it also helps you let go for the night because you feel like you achieved them. Um, I, I go, like, for example, if I landed this dunk. Instead of, like, going to sleep, oh, I want to go dunk, I want to go dunk, I can, like, visualize myself doing it. And if I am able to do it so powerfully, I literally feel like I just did the dunk. So then your body's in a different state. You feel like you can just let go and be like, ah, oh, and you you don't have that anxiety of trying to do something. You feel the relaxation of the accomplishment. And that's really helpful for sleep. So my sleeping's been great. I hope that makes sense. I think that's the end of it. I think I tied it all together. We got the friggin' manifestations plus the placebo effect. Doesn't know the difference. Your mind's controlling your body. Your emotions change your body. Your visualization changes your body. And then the science that everything is made out of energy and that, well, atoms are mostly energy and everything is atoms. So everything is mostly energy. So if you observe that reality in the future, that makes that reality real because they're all possibilities are out there in the quantum. And if you make it real, then you also are changing your state and producing different energy towards that reality. Okay. I think that's the best I can possibly do. I hope you enjoyed. I really wanted to share all of that. I, I If you look at my friggin' notes right here, it was a lot of... Ugh, I'm so, uh, it's so hard for me to stay organized. It's so much easier for me to go as I go. But I hope that makes sense. I hope you're on my friggin' level now. I got my energy shirt on. I hope you're understanding why I'm so nuts and you understand why I love energy so much because it's not... I feel like it, it's really simply, it's not, you don't just do something and then you feel the energy. If you feel it first, it'll get you there. And that's what I want. I want you guys to kind of be on this level because I really think it's beneficial. It's helping me out. I don't care if it sounds nuts because it's going well. <laughs> all right. I think that's it. I don't want to keep rambling. Thank you for all your support. Love you all. If you really, if you, I really love your feedback because if this is going completely nowhere, um, I need to change up what I'm doing. I think I got it out. I think I helped. I helped. I got that stuff out of my head. I think I got my point across is what I'm trying to say. And uh, yeah, more podcasts coming soon. Got a lot of guests. Support me by just subscribing and sharing. That's pretty much it. I don't really care. I love you all. I'm manifesting it anyway. I don't need your help. I just fucking get the energy in my freaking brain and fucking get pulled to it anyway. So <laughs> love you. Keep it up. Uh, enjoy your life. Enjoy being yourself. You are unique. You have your own combo of nature and nurture. I don't know why I'm getting into this now, but you have your own DNA and then no one's seen your combination of experiences with your DNA. Remember that. You're you. It's pretty cool. Do the best you you can be and you'll be the happiest. I love you all. (laughs) See ya. Toodaloo. Bye. I'm easily fascinated. I'm feeling so creative. It's your boy Stevie. I'm a planet Earth native. I'm enjoying all the moments because it's such a thrill living. And I'm not sure if you notice. Listen up, we're still spinning. Yo.